Hey everyone, this is Kevin Ducey, uh, president of Whiteboard CRM, and I'm back at you with another exciting edition of the Top Producer Spotlight. I'm so excited to be joined by my friend Dana Dodd here, and Dana is a true boss in ever sen every sense of the word. This is a mom of four that makes dinner for her team, uh, for her for her family every night, yet makes every closing and has an office of 22 people. Awesome producer. Dana, how are you doing today? Great. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Oh, well, thank you for joining me. I know that everybody who now they heard that they want instantaneously want to know how we do that, but we'll get to the secret, your secret sauce a little bit later. Dana, your, your story about how you got into the mortgage business is really kind of fascinating, especially considering where you were and where you are now. Would you mind sharing with the team how you got into the industry? Yeah, absolutely. Not a problem. I uh, am a graduate of Colorado State University and still live in Colorado. But in my senior year, I was able to get an internship at North American Mortgage Company Wholesale Lender at the time as a receptionist and part-time in the secondary marketing department. So you started off as a part-time receptionist and now branch manager of what, 22 people? Yeah, actually owner of my shop and I got 22 folks that work for me. So how does that happen? What, what do you attribute your rise in, in the industry to? Like, what did, what did you do differently? How are you different? Oh boy. I spent years and years in wholesale, and that's where I started, obviously, as we just mentioned, and kind of went up through the ranks in the wholesale arena, um, uh, kind of ultimately ending up at uh, several state region uh, with about 150 employees before the 2008-9 hit, and I was at the time uh, with Wachovia, who had gotten purchased by Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. And at that time in life, um, I was fortunate enough to get laid off. It was the best moment ever <laughs> um, because I knew I wasn't going to take any ranks in the banking world. That wasn't my desire. Um, so from that moment on, I had kind of a big major life hiccup and unfortunately lost uh, my husband, my uh, two oldest kids, dad passed away. And at that moment in time, I decided that I needed to have obviously less travel I need to have more control of my schedule. And I really wanted to have more ultimate control of my life. Um, I was kind of tired of, you know, working for the man, if you will. And I was tired of having, um, you know, having to work on someone else's um, dream and desire. And I really, really wanted to take that on my own. So I decided I remarried and we had um, another couple little guys. And I decided at that time that it was going to be best for me to start just producing as a loan officer. And I had, at that time I was in wholesale, I had a client that was an excellent client. He did a great job on his packages. He was a great salesman. And I asked if I could join him kind of underneath his wing to understand his side of the business. He also did a lot of lead uh, generation. And I felt like with his experience, with his background, my respect level for him and the ability to get some lead generation going, I could probably make this transition and be able to continue to support my family. And so literally while having um, our last little guy, um, we, I took zero days off, you know, had him and dove right into being a loan officer, Luma Ropes from David did an excellent job, but his drive and desire really ended up being more in the lead generation focused area. And I found that to be with my lifestyle, it's just hard. It was a grind. You know, you're having to call people on the dialer as fast as you can. They're pissed off at you. You know, it was just a really hard road. And so I felt like my my gift was a relationship building. My gift was relationship management. And I really, really wanted to develop relationships with agents both on, on both sides and be able to develop my business that way. So we uh, broke up or split ways and on a very positive note. And I decided I was going to go ahead and go off on my own and develop those really realtor relationships. I took a quick stop at a realtor's office that had an in-house lender and joined their team um, for just under a year. And they had a training school and I offered, raised my hand of course at any time and said, I would be happy to teach the mortgage portion of your class any and every day that I possibly could. And so I became their in-house trainer uh, and I taught probably in the neighborhood at eight to 10 classes a week with brand new agents. And so I was able to develop a great realtor base because they don't know what they're doing in that beginning 
beginning stages. So they're just grasping for information and help and resources. So I was able to help them kind of launch from newly licensed, newly trained, um, working with their mentor to get them to the next level. And those relationships have continued with me today. Um, I shortly thereafter, about it, like I said, about a year after started my own company as an opportunity to um, be the in-house lender, if you will, for another um, competing real estate office. So I'm actually housed right next door to about 300 agents um, and we're their preferred lender and have been for six years. Well, that's awesome. And those relationships and driving that relationship management has transferred beyond your borrowers and your realtor partners in the fact that you've got an amazing team that works for you. Like I said earlier, you cook dinner for your family every night because you want that work-life balance. Tell me a little bit about your team, how you're managing them and the interesting things that you're doing for them to make them want to come to work for you and not respond to those LinkedIn recruiting ads or calls that Lord knows everybody's getting right now. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, so a couple of things things that I have done. So on, uh, on the note of my team, if you will, my production team, I hired a, a right hand. I mean, 100% right hand. She knows what I do, knows how I speak, knows how I operate. And I pay her a very good uh, commission split from all of my production. And I think to be honest on my production side, you know, to find somebody she's quite a bit younger than I am. So she knows systems very well. She's very quick to learn. She's very committed. She's very loyal, but I pay her very well at the same time. So I know no matter what I'm doing, if I have to stop and help an LO on a different team, if I have to go, you know, move into brand new office space, which we just did. And we'll talk about in a second. I know she's there and can handle anything at any given time. And so I don't have 10 people that close to me. I have one person super close. And then we we have a, three other people that are on our team that kind of help her and keep things going. So it was really important to me to find truly a right hand. She knows my kids. She knows my husband. She knows, you know, my bank account numbers. Like the gal does an amazing job. I trust her implicitly and she is there all the time for me. Um, I like the age group of the, you know, 25 ish to 35 ish because of their technology skills. So I really don't get bogged down in, the borrower doesn't know how to use DocuSign. Can I stop what I'm doing and call the borrower and teach them how to use DocuSign? I tell my staff all the time, it's funny how buyers can plan a European vacation on their cell phone, but they can't sign one document on DocuSign because they don't know how. And I get really ticked off about that. So she's my gal that goes and scoops that stuff up. She takes care of them. She handles those hiccups. You know, I don't want to sit and do disclosures because disclosures, this, the lender's website is down. Your fees don't match. Whatever right. the problem is, I don't do any of that. So I sell the client. I, I, uh, I book the transaction. So I take and figure out where it's going to go, how I want it structured. I get my point file to be as perfect as I can, but I'm not detailed. So the borrower's you know, children's ages are not going to be in my point file because I'm going to have my assistant take care of that. So I don't get bogged down in things that really, really slow a producer down. Um, and I have to be okay with that. Many producers like to be kind of controlling because they want everything perfect and everything right and everything here. I gave that up years ago and said, there's no way I can do that and do the production that I want to do and run my office. So on well, my I'm, side, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. On top of that, like you're hiring 25 to 35 year olds. You're creating an office environment that is conducive to them. I, 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 I called you earlier, like when we were talking briefly, is like you're the Google of the mortgage industry. Explain to people who are listening what you're providing for the people who are working for you that make them want to stay and come and grind for you every day. Yeah, so fun. We just, uh, during COVID, you know, um, the brokers are better page and everyone's asking what everybody's doing and what's going on. And we took the opportunity to um, expand our office and we took down another 5,000 feet. Um, I have been hiring people that are not mortgage people. Um, maybe they just got their license or maybe they've been, you know, laid off during COVID. Maybe they're restaurant workers because I found them to be very, very, very hard workers. Um, so I took down space. Um, my whole front of my office is a big, large, open space. It's got a 75 inch TV. It's got desks and are not desks. It's unique couches, a bar top tables. We've got a tap, a Coors light tap out there. We've got a wine fridge and we've got a ping pong table. And what we like to do is have time when everybody can kind of come out of their offices, take a deep breath. We've got a Qdobo taco bar, you know, every Friday we're out there hanging out. We're getting to know each other on a personal level. You know, people might be critical because of the COVID times, but I would tell you it's really taken and brought all of us much 
much closer. Um, we've kind of let COVID be over here to the right and said, you know what, we're going to keep trucking. And uh, the space is super conducive to fun. We have music playing and, you know, four Sono speakers in four corners of the office all day long. It's country day, it's rap day, it's pop day, whatever it is. The music's pretty loud. I mean, it's, you have to close your door to have a good conversation, but we love the vibe and the vibe really helps with the younger people. I can only imagine, like I said earlier, everybody's getting their folks uh, those recruiting calls, those calls where you're trying to wear everybody out. And you're setting the example by, like you said, you make dinner for your family every night with your four children. I think that's really impressive. The one other thing I'd like to talk about uh, before we wrap this up is you commit to go to every closing with your buyers and how that's led to more and more business for you. And I know that's a little bit unique in the industry nowadays. You want to share with, uh, with people like what, what that recently did for you and why that's important? Yeah, it's always been my thing. And I feel like I start the transaction very engaged, you know, fortunately, just due to volume in life, I'm not as involved in the middle of the transaction. That's where my team takes over, but I can really pull it home at the end of the transaction and be present at the closing table. I take a very active role, making sure docs are there, making sure my wire is there. I get there before the buyers, the sellers, before the agents get there. I set up the room. I, tr I work with the title closer to let her know I've reviewed numbers. They're ready to go to closing. We don't need to dilly dally around and talk about that. Um, we want to move in. We've got 25 or 30 minutes here. Everyone's ready to go. I sit down. I introduce myself. I'm very present to the listing side. Um, and in just this most recent transaction that you're referring to, uh, we closed in eight days. They had been with two other lenders that got declined. Um, obviously, I used a lender that was very quick that I could help control the transaction. Um, I got to know the listing agent to the course of the eight days, but it was quick, right? And he has two um, homes he wants to refinance. He's an investor um, and he'd like to put those over to me. Plus he works with investors in Boulder, Colorado in the um, kind of college, you know, condo market, if you will. And so many of them are looking to refi now, but have really been struggling with the self-employed overlays, the COVID overlays. And I've worked with him to work through some of those. And then the buyer has two other properties that she committed to refi with us as well. So really that day we walked out with great relationships, um, a super happy group of people, and the potential to pull down about another 11 transactions. That's incredible, Dana. It's, uh, it really goes to, you know, your core of who you are as a human being. You like serving others, but you're very driven for success, and I think that's really awesome, and I think if anybody can take anything away from this is understand that you can have the work-life balance, you can have great production, and you can live a really good and solid life in, the, in this industry, even in 2020, if you take care of your team and take care of your partners and your borrowers, everything else is secondary, right? Absolutely. And it's just kind of tee off on the end of that, you know, conversation, you know, people always say they don't have time to go to closings. It's a waste of time to drive to closings. And unfortunately, I just don't see it that way. I find that it's the best time I could spend. It allows me to be, you know, in my car for a little bit of time, which I find is to be a nice transition period. You know, take a deep breath, kind of think about the things you need to get done. I've got a team that's behind me that's doing everything, returning phone calls, you know, text messages, what have you. But then when I get there, I'm fresh, I'm ready to go. I'm the relationship. I'm the face of the organization and that's where I'm best suited. I'm not best suited doing disclosures. So to me, getting out there in front of them and what I do best is absolutely a non-start. I have to go every time. So and now you've got a CRM that does the texting and emails for you. <laughs> I love it. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to have you, Dana. Thank you so much. It's uh, been, been wonderful speaking with you. Like I said, you and I, uh, we had a very unique vibe from the first time we spoke and we're happy to have you on the whiteboard team. And I just I, I can't thank you enough for the people who are going to take the opportunity today to listen to some of this and maybe employ, uh, employ some of it in their businesses, because I know it's been really stressful 2020 for everybody. It's hard to be stressful when you're having your best year financially, uh, but ruining relationships with not only family, uh, but also with partners just isn't worth it going forward. Take some tips from Dana, put those into play, live a better lifestyle and keep uh, embodying the American dream. Thank you again, Dana, so much. I appreciate your time. I thank you so much. See you. Bye, Kevin. Bye-bye.